Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we will discuss CCN version 7 lab activity, basic switch configuration. Before coming to this lab activity, friends, if you are watching our channel first time, or if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. And also, if you like to get more technical contents or if you like to contact our team, you can visit our website. Now, coming back to our lab activity, here we can see our topology with a switch and a PC. Here, this switch is connected to this device uh, PCA uh, using fast Ethernet. Also, we can see it's connected using a console cable for the basic configuration of this switch S1. Now coming to the addressing table uh, for the device S1 and PCA, uh, we can see it's uh, IPv6 and IPv4 address for the interface uh, VLAN 99 and uh, NIC. Coming to the objectives, in part 1, cable the network and verify the default switch configuration. Then configure basic network device settings, like configure basic switch settings, configure the PC IP address. Then in part 3, verify and test network connectivity, display device configuration, test end-to-end -end connectivity with the ping, then test remote management capabilities with the telnet. In part 4, manage the MAC address table, record the MAC address of the host, then determine the MAC addresses that the switch has learned, then list the show MAC address table command options, then set up a static MAC address. These are the objectives of this lab activity. Here we are going to use our Cisco packet tracer for this lab activity. We will go through the scenario. Cisco switches can be configured with a special IP address known as the switch virtual interface that is SVI. The SVI or management address can be used for remote access to the switch to display or configure settings. If the VLAN 1 SVI is assigned an IP address, by default, all ports in VLAN 1 have access to the SVI IP address. Yes, that's correct and we will uh, configure uh, this uh, SVI IP address. In this lab, we will build a simple uh, topology using Ethernet LAN cabling and access a Cisco switch using the console and remote access methods. We will examine default uh, switch configurations before configuring basic switch settings. These basic switch settings include device name, interface description, local passwords, then message of the day that is MOTD banner, then IP addressing and a static MAC address. Then we will also demonstrate the use of a management IP address for a remote switch management. The topology consists of one a switch and one host using only Ethernet and console ports. They given a note here. The switches uh, used are Cisco Catalyst 2960S with the Cisco IOS release 15.2, uh, LAN base K9 image. Other switches and the Cisco IOS versions can be used. Depending on the model and the Cisco IOS version, the commands available and output produced might vary from what is shown in the labs. Yes, that's exactly correct. They given a note again, make sure that the switches have been erased and have no startup configurations. If you are unsure, contact your instructor. Refer to Appendix A for the uh, procedures to initialize and reload a switch. Anyways, here we are going to do with our Cisco packet tracer. Uh, so we will uh, use a fresh uh, switch for the configuration. The default BIOS template used by the switch database manager, that is SDM, does not provide IPv6 address capabilities. Verify that SDM is using either uh, the dual IPv4 and IPv6 template or uh, the LAN based routing template. The new template will be used after a reboot even if the configuration is not saved. Yes, because here uh, in this uh, switch, we are going to configure uh, both IPv4 and IPv6 address. Now we will uh, design our uh, topology. Uh, here we can see the resources. We record one uh, switch, 
the Cisco 2960 with the Cisco IOS release 15.2 uh, LAN by SK9 image or um, comparable then one PC then one, one console cable then one Ethernet cable coming to our packet tracer we will use this uh, 2960 switch also we will uh, use a PC we will give the name as S1 and uh, PC1 Now we will connect this uh, switch S1 to this PC1 using copper straight through. We will uh, connect to first third 0 slash 6 to this PC1. Also we will use console. And we will access this uh, switch using PC1. We will go to desktop then terminal. We will leave this uh, port configuration default. Enter. Enable. Then we will give this command show. Yes, DM. Prefer. Now here we can see uh, the current template is a default template. Then the selected template optimizes uh, the resources in the uh, switch to support this uh, level of uh, features for zero rotor interfaces and uh, 255 VLANs. Number of IPv4 uh, MAC and uh, MAC security. We can see here it supports only IPv4 and not IPv6. Next is uh, use the following commands to assign the dual dash ipv4 dash and dash ipv6 template as the default sdm template so we have to give sdm prefer then this command uh, dual ipv4 and ipv6 default we will uh, try here in this uh, switch configure terminal SDM, yes, here we can see SDM. We have a prefer. Okay. And here we cannot see this uh, dual IPv4 and IPv6. We have a default and uh, QoS bias. Yes, uh, it's obviously uh, due to uh, this uh, switch or uh, its iOS version. And if you do with the latest version of a uh, switch, you will get this uh, uh, command option SDM prefer uh, dual dash IPv4 dash and dash IPv6 option. Coming to part 1, cable the network and verify the default switch configuration. In part 1, uh, we will set up the network topology and verify default switch settings. Okay, here uh, our topology is ready and we connected uh, these devices. Cable the network as shown in the topology. Yes, uh, it's already ready here. Connect the console cable as shown in the topology. Do not connect the PCA Ethernet cable at this time okay we will uh, remove this uh, ethernet cable and we will connect later then gi they given a note here if you are uh, using netlab shut down uh, f faster than 0 6 on s1 uh, this has the same effect uh, as not connecting pc hyphen a to s1 okay that's right so connect to the switch from pc hyphen a using uh, tera tame or other terminal emulation program okay why must uh, you uh, use a console connection to initially configure the switch why is it not possible to connect to the switch via telnet or ssh yes initially uh, the devices including this uh, switch uh, did not do uh, any kind of configuration uh, on it and even we cannot access this uh, switch using uh, the services uh, telnet or ssh because we did not configure uh, any ip address or any network service uh, in this device we have to do those configurations uh, using this uh, uh, pc1 uh, which is connected to this uh, switch s1 using a console cable 
Now in step 2, verify the default switch configuration. In this step, we will examine the default switch settings such as current switch configuration, IOS information, interface properties, then VLAN information and the flash memory. Here you can access all the switch IOS commands in privileged exit mode. Access to privileged exit mode should be restricted by password protection to prevent unauthorized use because it provides direct access to global configuration mode and uh, commands used to configure operating parameters. You will set passwords later in this lab. The privileged exit mode command set includes those commands contained in a user exit mode as well as the configure command through which access to the remaining command modes is gained. Use the enable command to enter privileged exit mode. Coming to PC1, uh, we will go to desktop then terminal and we will leave this part configuration default and we will press ok then press return to get started we will press enter and here we can see now we are in user exit mode here we are going to give the command enable so that we will move to privileged exit mode Assuming the switch had no configuration file stored in non-volatile random access memory that is NVRAM, a console connection using Teratem or other terminal uh, emulation program will place you at the user exit mode prompt on the switch with a prompt of a switch greater than. Yes, we have seen that here. Then use the enable command to enter privileged exit mode. Yes, we done that here already. Notice that the prompt changed in the configuration to reflect privileged exit mode. Verify that there is a clean default configuration file on the switch by issuing the show running dash config privileged exit mode command. If a configuration file was previously saved, it must be removed. Depending on the switch model and iOS version, your configuration may look slightly different. However, there should be a no configured passwords or IP address. If your switch does not have a default configuration, erase and reload the switch. They given a note here. Appendix A details the steps to initialize and reload a switch. Okay. Uh, examine the current running configuration file. We can do that. We will go to PC1 and here we will give the show command show running config. Then how many fast Ethernet interfaces does a 2960 switch have? So coming to our output, here we can see a fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 till fast Ethernet 0 slash 24. That means uh, 24 fast Ethernet interfaces. Next is how many gigabit Ethernet interfaces does a 2960 switch have? Here we can see it's 2 gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. Next is what is the range of values shown for the VTY lines? It's a 16 lines from 0 to 15. Here we can see that line VTY 0 to 4 and line VTY 5 to 15. So we can say it's from 0 to 15 total 16 lines. Now examine the startup configuration file in NVRAM. Why does this message appear? Okay, we will go to PC1 switch. Here we will give a show startup config, the NVRAM content. And it shows startup config is not present because we did not save from RAM to NVRAM. Next is examine the characteristics of the SVI for VLAN 1. Is there an IP address assigned to VLAN 1? What is the MAC address of this uh, SVI? Answer uh, will vary. Uh, is this interface up? We will verify that. Back to our uh, switch. Here we will give the show command show interfaces. It's uh, VLAN 1. And we will verify the details. VLAN 1, here we can see VLAN 1 is administratively down, line protocol is also down, 
and here we can see hardware is a CPU interface address is here we can see it's a MAC address okay and here we cannot see any IP address uh, set for this uh, SBA Next is examine the IP properties of the SVI VLAN 1. What output do you see? Okay, here we will give show IP interfaces. We can give a VLAN 1. And here it shows VLAN 1 is administratively down. Line protocol is also down. Internet protocol processing disabled. Next is uh, connect an Ethernet cable from PC-A to port 6 on the uh, switch and examine the IP properties of the SVI VLAN 1. Allow time for the switch and PC to negotiate a duplex and a speed parameters. And if you are using NetLab, enable interface uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 6 on S1. What output do you see? We will do that uh, coming to connections we will use copper uh, straight through from s1 we have to connect to faster third zero slash six to this pc1 okay again we will go to this uh, switch and here we will give a show ip interface vlan1 and here we can see the details Next is examine the Cisco IOS version information of the uh, switch. What is the Cisco IOS version that the switch is running? Also, what is the system image file name? What is the base MAC address of this uh, switch? Okay, we will uh, check show version. And we can see the details here. Here we can see its version 12.2 Cisco IOS software C2960 software LAN base dash M and we can see other information here we can see base Ethernet MAC address And uh, here we can see uh, switch ports, its model, software version. And here we can see software image. Uh, it's a C2960 LAN base dash M. Image file name. Uh, what is the system image file name? Even we can verify that using the command show. Uh, it's a flash. And here we can see that file name. Okay, next is examine the default properties of the faster third interface used by PC hyphen A. Uh, we have to give this command a show interface faster third zero slash six. Uh, is the interface up or down? We'll verify that one by one. Show interface faster third zero slash six and here we can see faster third zero slash six is up line protocol is up and it's connected so what event that would make an interface go up because this interface is now connected to uh, this uh, pc not only to a pc uh, if this uh, uh, Ethernet is connected to any uh, port, it will be up. Next is what is the MAC address of the interface? So here we can see the MAC address of this interface, so fast Ethernet 0 slash 6.
Next is what is the speed and duplex setting of the interface? Here we can see it's a speed bandwidth. Then uh, here we can see uh, it's a full duplex. Next is uh, examine the default VLAN settings of the switch. What is the default name of VLAN 1? Okay, we will do that. We will give a show VLAN. And here we can see the details. Here we can see VLAN 1, its name is a default. Next is uh, which ports are in VLAN 1 and is VLAN 1 is active? Here we can see VLAN 1 is active and here we can see the ports in VLAN 1. It's all the ports. By default, all the ports are, are in VLAN 1. From FA0 slash 1 till FA0 slash 24. Also 2 gigabit ports, 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2. Okay, now examine flash memory. Issue one of the following commands to examine the contents of the flash directory. We have to give this command a show flash or we have to give dir flash. Okay, here we will give show flash and we can see the details. Uh, files have a file extension such as dot bin at the end of the file name. Directories uh, do not have a file extension. What is the file name of the Cisco IOS image? Yes, it's already we have seen. Here we can uh, see uh, show flash directory of flash. And here we can see our IOS uh, file name with the extension dot bin. Okay, now it's time to go to part 2, configure basic network device settings. In part 2, we will configure basic settings for the uh, switch and uh, PC. In step 1, configure basic switch settings. Copy the following basic configuration and paste it into uh, S1 while in global configuration mode. Here we can see those commands. Okay, we will uh, do it one by one. We will go to PC1, terminal. Okay, here we will give a no IP domain lookup. We have to go to global configuration mode, configure terminal, no IP domain lookup. Then host name we have to give as S1, host name as S1. Okay. Then uh, service password encryption uh, to encrypt all plain text passwords. Service password dash encryption. Then enable a secret as class. Okay. Then we have to set the banner MOTD that is a message of the day. Banner MOTD we will start with the delimiter. Unauthorized access is uh, strictly prohibited. Uh, we will also end with the same delimiter. Enter. Next is set the SVI IP address of the switch. This allows remote management of the switch. Before you can manage S1 remotely from PC A, you must assign the switch an IP address. The default configuration on the switch is to have the management of the switch controlled through VLAN 1. However, a best practice for basic switch configuration is to change the management VLAN to a VLAN other than VLAN 1. Okay, uh, that can be done. For management purposes, use VLAN 99. The selection of VLAN 99 is arbitrary and in no way uh, implies that you should always use VLAN 99. Yes, that's correct. We can use any VLAN ID for uh, uh, management configuration. Next is uh, first create the new VLAN 99 on the switch. 
then set the IP address of the switch to 192.168.1.2 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 on the internal virtual interface VLAN 99. IPv6 address can also be configured on the SBI interface. Use the IPv6 addresses listed in the addressing table. Notice that the VLAN 99 interface is in the down state even though you entered the no shutdown command. The interface is currently down because no switch ports are assigned to VLAN 99. Okay, but then assign all user ports to VLAN 99. Okay, we just create this VLAN 99, then we will assign this IP address, uh, then we will go ahead, coming to our uh, switch. Now we are in global configuration mode, we will create our VLAN 99. Now we will go to this interface, that is interface of VLAN uh, 99, then we will assign the IP address. And here we can see now interface VLAN 99 changed state to up. Now we will configure the IP address first. Uh, it's 192.168.1.2. Then it's a submit to mask. Then press enter. We will try to set IPv6 address uh, for this interface so VLAN 99. But here, anyways, we'll try that. IP. Here we can see it support uh, in this packet tracer only IP, not IPv6. We can see it's unrecognized command. Okay, anyways, we will uh, do only with this IP before address here. But in the real time, uh, uh, once you enable the command, we have seen that in the beginning. Here we can see that uh, SDM prefer dual dash IPv4 dash and dash ipv6 default once you enable uh, even we can configure uh, ipv6 address okay that's right uh, next we will assign all user ports to vlan 99 okay that can be done we will exit from this interface then we will go to uh, all the interfaces so we have to give a range fast ethernet 0 slash 1 uh, till 24 comma also we have a uh, two gigabit uh, ethernet interfaces so it's a uh, gigabit ethernet zero slash one and two then enter here we will give a uh, switch port access vlan it's 99 right to establish connectivity between the host and the switch the ports used by the host must be in the same VLAN as the switch. Notice in the above output that the VLAN 1 interface goes down because none of the ports are assigned to VLAN 1. After a few seconds, VLAN 9, uh, sorry, VLAN 99 comes up because at least one active port that is uh, faster third and zero slash six uh, with the PC dash A attached is now assigned to VLAN 99. Okay, now issue the show VLAN brief command to verify that all ports are in uh, VLAN 99, not in VLAN 1. Okay, we will verify that. We will uh, exit from this uh, specific interface mode. We can press Ctrl Z. Here we will give the command show VLAN brief and we will verify that. We will expand our window. And here we can see now VLAN 99 is active and all the interfaces uh, assigned to this VLAN 99. Also here we can see none of the interfaces are assigned to uh, this uh, VLAN 1, the default to VLAN. Now coming to the next instruction, configure the default gateway for S1. If no default gateway is set, the switch cannot be managed from a remote network that is more than one router away. Although this activity does not include an external IP gateway, assume that you will eventually connect the LAN to a router for external access. Assuming that the LAN interface on the router is 192.168.1.1, set the default gateway for the switch. Okay, we will set the default gateway. We will go to global configuration mode configure terminal 
then we will set IP default gateway it's 192.168.1.1 next is console port access should also be restricted with a password use Cisco as the console login password in this activity the default configuration is to allow all console connections with no password needed to prevent console uh, messages from interrupting commands so use the logging synchronous option okay that can be done so here we will go to line console zero uh, first we will give that a uh, logging it's uh, logging synchronous okay then we will set the password as a sp specified it's a cisco also we will give login okay next is configure the virtual terminal that is vty lines for the switch to allow telnet access if you do not configure a vty password you will not be able to uh, telnet to the switch yes that's correct so we will exit from this uh, console zero then we will go to uh, line vty we will go to all the lines that is from 0 to 15 all the 16 lines okay here we will give the password as a cisco then we will give login okay we'll press ctrl z okay next is why is the login command required obviously we require this login command if you are not giving this login command this device will not be prompted for the password now we will come to step 2 configure an ip address on pc a assign the ip address and submit to mask to the pc as shown in the addressing table an abbreviated version of the procedure is described here a default gateway is not required for this topology however you can enter 192.168.1.1 and fe80 double colon 1 for ipv6 uh, to simulate a router attached to s1 here we can see the procedure to uh, configure an ip address uh, on a pc uh, we have to go to control panel uh, then in the category view select a view network status and task then click change adapter settings on the left panel then right click an ethernet interface and uh, choose properties then uh, choose internet protocol version 4 that is a tcp bar ipv4 and you click properties click the use the following ip address radio button and enter the ip address and submit to mask then click ok then select internet protocol version 6 uh, tcp bar ipv6 and click properties to set this ipv6 address then click the use the following ipv6 address radio button and enter the ipv6 address and prefix and click ok to continue then click ok to exit the properties window Okay, but here we are using our Cisco packet tracer. Uh, so uh, we will go to this PC1. We will close this uh, terminal. Then we will go to IP configuration, and here we can set the IP address. We will uh, go to our addressing table. Here we can see PC A IP address. We will copy this IP address. Okay, then it's a submit to mask then it's a default gateway also here we can see ipv6 configuration we will uh, copy this ipv6 address then we will give its prefix a slash 64 then it's uh, oh there is some problem Or we will give this this IPv6 address uh, 2001 colon db8 colon ac80 colon it's double colon 3 okay then we will give slash 64 then coming to its IPv6 gateway fe80 double colon 3 fe80 double colon 3 Okay, then we will close this window. In part 3, verify and test network connectivity. In part 3, we will verify and document the switch configuration 
test 22 and connectivity between PC A and S1 and test the switches remote management capability. Step 1 Display the switch configuration. Use the console connection on PC A to display and verify the switch configuration. The show running config command displays the entire running configuration one page at a time. Use the spacebar uh, to advance paging. A sample configuration is shown here. The settings you configured are highlighted in yellow. The other configuration settings are iOS defaults. Here we can see the result for a show running config service password encryption, host name, enabled secret, and other configurations. We will uh, just verify in our uh, uh, packet tracer coming to PC1 terminal. Okay. Show running config. And here we can verify one by one. Service password encryption, host name. Also, we can see the enable secret password, no IP domain lookup. Here we can see uh, all interfaces are in uh, VLAN 99 and its uh, IP address, VLAN 99 IP address and its a default gateway. Also we can see line console password and its login synchronous. Also we can see line VTY its password. Now verify the management VLAN 99 settings uh, with this command show interface VLAN 99. What is the bandwidth on this interface? What is the VLAN 99 state? What is the line uh, protocol state? Okay, we can verify that. We will give this command show interface VLAN 99 and we can see the details. We will expand this window. And here we can see its bandwidth. Okay. And here we can see VLAN 99 is up. Line protocol is also up. Coming to step 2 test end to end connectivity with the ping. From the command prompt on PC A, ping the address of PC A first, uh, then uh, ping to uh, SBI management address of S1. Okay, we can do that. We will okay ping to one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot ten okay we ping from the uh, uh, switch so we will uh, exit from this uh, switch Oh, sorry now we are in terminal we have to go to command prompt so we will close this terminal then we will go to command prompt and then we will uh, ping we will ping to uh, this pc1 itself uh, 192.168.1.10 so we get the replays now we will uh, ping to our uh, uh, switch it's 1.2 it's working Because PC-A needs to resolve the MAC address of S1 through ARP, the first packet may time out. If a ping results continue to be unsuccessful, troubleshoot the basic device configurations. Check both the physical cabling and the logical addressing. Anyways, it's working here in packet tracer. And now we will go to step 3. Test and verify remote management of S1. You will now use Telnet to remotely access the switch. In this lab, PC-A and S1 reside side by side. In a production network, the switch could be in a wiring closet on the top floor while your management PC is located on the ground floor. In this step, you will use Telnet to remotely access switch S1 using its SVA management address. Telnet is not a secure protocol. However, you will use it to test remote access. Uh, with the telnet all information including passwords and commands are sent across the session in plain text that's why we say uh, it's not secure uh, so we have to use ssh okay 
uh, in a subsequent labs uh, you will use ssh to remotely access a network devices all right here anyway we will test with the telnet uh, now open a teratame or other terminal emulation program with the telnet capability then select the telnet server and provide the sbi management address to connect to s1 the password we configured is cisco after entering the password cisco you will be uh, at the user exit mode prompt then access privileged exit mode uh, using the enable command and providing the secret password class uh, once we come to uh, this uh, privileged exit mode we have to save the configuration then type exit to end the telnet session okay now we will test and verify this uh, remote management uh, of uh, switch yes one coming to our uh, command prompt here we will give a telnet then our uh, ip address of our switch it's 192.168.1.2 and here we can see now it's prompted for the password it's cisco once more we will give that okay now enable you will go to privileged exit mode again prompted for the uh, privileged exit password it's cisco once more we will try what happened to our password I think we set a uh, not as Cisco. Oh, yes, sorry, we set as class. We will give again enable. Then password is class. Yes, now we are in uh, privileged exit mode. Now we will uh, save the configurations. So we have to copy from RAM to NVRAM, that is uh, running config to startup config. Right, here we can see it's done. Now we will exit. Coming to part 4, manage the MAC address table. In part 4, you will determine the MAC addresses that the switch has learned. Uh, set up a static MAC address on uh, one interface of the switch and then remove the static MAC address from that interface. In step 1, record the MAC address of the host. Open a command prompt on PC-A and issue the IP config space slash all command to determine and record the layer 2 that is the physical addresses of the NIC. Okay, we can do that. Here is our uh, PC1. You will give the command IP config space slash all and we will get its uh, physical IP address. Here we can see fast Ethernet 0 and its uh, physical address. Okay, just we will copy this uh, address and we will uh, store here. Now in step 2 determine the MAC addresses that the switch has learned. Display the MAC addresses using the show MAC address dash table command. So how many dynamic addresses are there? How many MAC addresses are there in total? Does the dynamic MAC address match the MAC address of PC-A? We will get the answers for these questions once we give this uh, a command. Show MAC address table. Okay, we will go to our switch. Okay, we will go like this. Password is Cisco. Enable password is class. Here we are going to give that. Show MAC address table. And here we can see MAC address. Its a type is dynamic. And here we can see the ports. It's FA0 slash 6. It's connected to this port. Now we have to match this MAC address uh, with the address of our uh, a device PC1. Here we can see it's same 0030 A3 A2 4 A3. It's matching. Step 3 list the show MAC address dash table options. Display the MAC address table options. Uh, show a MAC address table. Then again, we are going to put question mark. How many options are available for the show MAC address table command? Uh, we will check that here we will give show mac address table space then again question mark here we can see those options uh, dynamic interfaces and static 
Now issue the show MAC address table dynamic command to display only the MAC addresses that were lent dynamically. Uh, show MAC address dash table dynamic. How many dynamic addresses are there? Okay, we'll verify that. Here we will give dynamic and we can see one MAC address, the MAC address of our uh, PC1. Next is view the MAC address uh, entry for PC A. Okay, we already we have seen that. Now coming to step 4, uh, set up a static MAC address. Clear the MAC address table. To remove the existing MAC addresses, uh, use the clear MAC address dash table dynamic command in privileged exit mode. Okay, we will give that. So here we have to give clear MAC address table dynamic. Okay, right. Then verify that the MAC address table was cleared. Show MAC address table. Okay, we will verify that. Show. MAC address table. Yes, it's cleared. Now, how many static MAC addresses are there and how many dynamic addresses are there? Okay, uh, we did not see any dynamic addresses or even static uh, addresses. But in real time, uh, you can verify uh, the static MAC addresses. Next is examine the MAC table again. More than likely, an application running on your PC has already sent a frame out the NIC to S1. A look at the MAC address table again in privileged exit mode to see if S1 has uh, relayed the MAC address of PC A. Okay, we will try that to show MAC address table. Uh, but here we cannot see any MAC address. Actually, uh, we are using a uh, pack tracer. Uh, we will have a ping to our uh, switch. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's not telnet. Okay, we'll exit. We'll give the password here. Then we will exit from here. Now we will uh, ping to our switch 192.168.1.2. Now we will uh, try show mac address table and here we can see that the pc is uh, uh, physical address so how many dynamic addresses are there uh, so we can see uh, one uh, dynamic address why did this change from the last display um, in last time uh, actually we cleared this uh, uh, mac address table then again uh, we done some activity on our pc so uh, we have seen this uh, MAC address again. If if S1 has uh, not uh, uh, relent the MAC address for PC dash A, ping the VLAN 99 IP address of the switch from PC dash A and then repeat the show MAC address table command. Yes, this is what we done just now. Uh, now uh, set up a static MAC address to specify which ports a host can connect to. One option is to create a static mapping of the host MAC address to a port. Set up a static MAC address on a fast Ethernet 0 slash 6 using the address that was recorded for PC dash A in part 4. Step 1. The MAC address uh, 005056BE6C89 is used as an example only. You must use the MAC address of PC dash A, which is uh, different than the one uh, given here as an example. Okay, so here we have to use uh, our uh, PC MAC address. Uh, here we can see the command MAC address table static then we specify that MAC address uh, then uh, VLAN ID it's 99 interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 6 we will do this we will go to global configuration mode configure terminal and here we will give a MAC address table static then we have to specify uh, this uh, physical address we will copy that the MAC address of our PC okay then we have to give a VLAN 99 interface a faster third and zero slash six now verify the MAC address table entries show MAC address table how many total MAC addresses are there how many static addresses are there okay we will verify we will press ctrl z show MAC address table 
and here we can see our PC MAC address and now we can see its type is static. Remove the static MAC address entry, enter global configuration mode and remove the command by putting a no in front of the command string. They given a note, the MAC address, uh, this MAC address is used in the example only. Yes, already they told that. Use the MAC address for PC-A. So we have to uh, give no, then the command would be given early. So coming to our uh, S1, here we can use up arrow so that we will get the previous command we given. It's a configure terminal and uh, here we can see that command. So here we have to give no uh, beginning of this com uh, command. So we can press Ctrl A so that this cursor will go to the beginning of this command. Okay, here we will give no, then space, then the command we given. Okay, then press enter. Now verify that the static MAC address has been cleared. Show MAC address table. How many total static MAC addresses are there? We will give this a show command now. We will uh, go to privileged exit mode, show a MAC address table. Now here we cannot see uh, any address. Okay, just we will uh, ping and we will uh, try again this command. We will uh, ping to our uh, switch. Now we will uh, try this command again. And here we can see that MAC address of our PC and now the type is dynamic. Now here we can see some reflection questions. Why should you configure the VTY password for the switch? Uh, obviously we have to configure uh, VTY password if you want to access the device remotely uh, using the services like uh, uh, Telnet or SSH. We cannot say for SSH, uh, it's for a Telnet. Uh, if you are not configuring this VTY password, uh, we cannot access this Telnet service. Uh, why change the default VLAN 1 to a different VLAN number? Uh, it's obviously uh, to improve the security. Next is, uh, how can you prevent passwords from being sent in plain text? Yeah, we have a command uh, called service password encryption, uh, which will encrypt all plain text passwords. Next is, why configure a static MAC address on a port interface? Yeah, it's to specify which ports a host can connect to. Now, coming to Appendix A, initialize and reload a switch. So, here we can see how to initialize and reload a switch. Even we can delete uh, our VLAN file, VLAN.dat. Also, we can see how to erase a startup config. Then we have to reload our device, I mean our switch. Okay, right. Uh, friends, in this video, we discussed our CCN version 7 lab activity, basic switch configuration. Now, if you have any doubt, any suggestions regarding this video, please comment below. Also, if you like our video, give a thumb and share with all your friends. Also, don't forget to visit our website. Stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.